And welcome back to another CBB Talk with your boy, Will Dickinson. We got a great Saturday slate for you today. And honestly, just a great weekend. We have this weekend eight of the top ten teams in the AP poll going up against each other. It's the best weekend in college basketball. If you have friends that don't watch the sport, tell them to tune in um, because this is Really, the best weekend we're going to have all season. This is going to preview what March could look like. We're going to have amazing games. And that's what this episode is going to be about. It's the weekend preview. I'm doing this on Saturday. Couldn't do it yesterday. We're doing it on Saturday morning. Um, So we're just going to be previewing mostly today. And then I, there's one really good game on Sunday that we got to talk about. And then if any of these teams have results that from the last couple of days, then we can, of course, talk about that. But Really, we're just going to be diving into this weekend because it's an amazing weekend. We're going to have a lot of big results, a lot of change up in the polls. In my top 25, I've already had that um, from last night. But man, we got some really, really good games to talk about. So let's get into it. The first really interesting matchup of the day is UConn. Number one in the country in the AP poll and my poll. They're going on the road against the Johnnies here in MSG. Um, Rick Bettino's led t- squad is really a bubble team at the moment. Um, they've struggled a decent amount in Big East play, but this is a big one here, and this could be a huge resume boosting win. UConn, um, one game loss in the conference so far. They've been rolling as a recent. They did not lose a game in the month of January. Um, in their one and zero in February, they did get a nice win on Thursday. I believe it was that Wednesday. Maybe it was Wednesday um, against Providence. Um, it was close. UConn held on and got the win. Now they're going on the road. Sorry. What was it doing? Against St. John's. Sorry. They were going on the road at St. John's. St. John's very good team. Uh, Joel Soriano. They got a lot of good players over there. Um, UConn, though, has just been a force to be reckoned with in the Big East here. Uh, what they've got John, uh, Donovan Klingon back, but it's really been a Tristan Newton led team, an Alex Caravan led team, a Cam Spencer team, um, and Stefan Castle stepped up in that Pro- Providence game. He's really coming into his own, and if he can do that, um, UConn may be an unbeatable team, and they've proven to be the number one team in the country. Um, but this is a tough test on the road. Any game on the road in the Big East is really a tough one, um, and if they can pull this one off. They'll be number one again in the poll. Um, and I know Dan Hurley really values being number one. But for St. John's, it's a huge game here. Um, they're, I think they're going to be right in the bubble. We see Butler get a big win last night, which is a team that's also making its way to the bubble. Seton Hall, Providence, all these Big East teams. There will be bubble teams. I think St. John's will be in that category. And I bet two of them will probably make it out of those five, or maybe three of them could. Um, St. John's is going to be one of those teams, and this could be a game where it could get you off that bubble if you beat the number one team in the country. That's that. That one, that one's on 12 on Fox. A little sneaky SEC game. Um, this is a sneaky one. South Carolina is traveling to Georgia here. Um, South Carolina, um, yes, they got a big win this weekend. I dropped – I. Bump South Carolina up to 15th in the nation here, but they're going on the road against a good, uh, a very, you know, a good Georgia team um, that has been able to show how their, their true um, talent, they they have really good players, and they've, been, they've played some really tough games this year and lost close ones. This team is definitely an NCAA tournament caliber type squad, um, and this is a road game for South Carolina. Pull this off. If you lose this game, South Carolina, you're still being my poll. Uh, but if you win this game, it just further validates you as a legit, legit team, and you'll be heading towards the NCAA tournament. So watch out for that one on SEC Network um, at 1 o'clock. It does, I mean, the game's really 2 o'clock when the game start getting good, so the early slate isn't amazing. Um, Texas, you know, coming off a loss earlier this week, is going at TCU. Um TCU, man, I really still like this TCU team. I've been talking about them the last like, couple weeks of how I like their experience, I like their roster, and Texas is a team that's really is on probably on the is probably on the wrong side of the bubble right now. Um, and this is a chance to get a road win in the Big Twelve. Not easy to do whatsoever. I expect TCU to win this game at home. I have TCU up to twentieth in the country here in my rankings. Texas, um, a win here would be good. 
but it was it's a building block. Um, I don't think you would still be an NCAA tournament team without it. I heard it's going to be a rowdy environment up there in Fort Worth. I think Barstool is saying horns down T-shirts to TCU. Um, I say accept it because you know what my thought is. Horns down. Always horns down, man. I just I just don't like horns down. I just don't like Texas. Texas fans piss me off. They piss me off um, quite amount. Quite amount. Quite amount. Quite much. They piss me off a lot. Um, and this is a really tough game for Texas. Um, TCU has the experience that matched Texas's. Um, I'm not sure if they really have the size. They, they do have a smaller roster, but I like that they can space out the floor here. And Texas bigs are going to have to run this game. And Max Aisman has been amazing, but Tyrese Hunter has really been disappointing this season. He's going to have to step up for Texas if they want to become you know, a, a team that can contend in the Big 12 or even make an NCAA tournament. That was on ESPN 2 at 2. Uh, the ESPN game at 2 is a huge one in the ACC. Um, this could be the battle for the third-place team because uh, I think we have the best four teams in the ACC playing against each other today. We have Virginia on the road at Clemson. Virginia has sil silently come back and been playing really good. I believe they're on a 5-6 game win streak. They're 16-5. They've lost two games in or three games in conference play. Um, but their kryptonite this year has been on the road. They've really struggled there. Um, and this is a chance to get a road win at Clemson, who's struggled in ACC play so far after an amazing start to the year. I believe I had Clemson almost near my top 10 earlier this year. Um, they dropped off their 14-6, and six, and this is a huge game for Brad Brunel's squad. I expect P.J. Hall to go out there and dominate, but Virginia's defense has been on another level these last couple weeks, um, allowing 50, really 50 points a game here. Reese Beekman is one of the best players in the ACC. Ryan Dunn's one of the best defenders in the ACC. Um, and they are going to be able to slow the game down like they always do and make this a low-scoring game, and Clemson's going to have to be comfortable with it. Look, Clemson's a very experienced team, and I think they'll be able to handle it, but it's going to get frustrating playing against Virginia when you, you're going to score about – you're going to have to be a really efficient. You're going to be a, have to be comfortable with slowing the game down and taking your time, and then you have to end up hitting threes. I think Clemson can do it. I think Clemson's going to pull out this game at home. Virginia has not been a, ro a road team. They're undefeated at home this year but not good at home uh, or on the road. And I think that Clemson will, should be able to get this done here. Um, I think Clemson's still a tournament team at this point, but they got to be careful. They can't play around too much um, with Virginia or it, with this season really in general because um, I think both these teams right now um, are tournament teams at the moment. Um, I think the ACC will end up getting four, and these could be the other two besides Duke Carolina, uh, but this is a big one for the ACC standings, and I think this is a bigger game for Clemson in general because it's a home one there. This will be a huge added bonus for Virginia to get this win, um, but I don't really expect it. 3.30 on Fox, a huge Mountain West showdown between the Utah State Aggies at San Diego State. We saw San Diego State take a loss uh, this week to, who did San Diego State lose to? Was it Boise? Did they lose a home game to Boise this week? Was that what it was? No, they lost at Colorado State. Okay, yeah, they lost at Colorado State this week, um, which is a tough game here. San Diego State's been a team where they, they haven't been able to string together like three wins in a row. This Utah State team has proven to be the best team in the Mount West, but they're going on the road um, as five-and-a-half-point underdogs, which is a lot there. Um San Diego State's really done the. I mean, I'm sorry, Utah State's done a really amazing job this year. Uh, is it? It's not Osborne. It's Ozaborn. What's it, the the leading scorer for uh Utah State? I mean, look, this team brought in a whole. Yeah, Ozaborn has been amazing this year. Um, he's been the leading scorer. He averages 19 points a game. Ian Martinez, a guy, 14 points per game. They have four guys that average double digits. It's an actually pretty deep team for the Aggies here. Um, and they like to play inside out. This is a team that I think slept on come to March. Um, they're 19 and two in the Mountain West. They they are at the top of the conference and they've proven to be the best. Um, San Diego State, I do think, is still a good team that can win games in the NCAA tournament. They have the pedigree. Um, Jalen Ledee versus Osborne is going to be a great matchup here. Two good bigs going at each other. I think San Diego State will pull this one off at home. Um, Again, home court advantage is huge in college basketball, and I expect um, San Diego State to have that. 
and then end up getting a big win. And I think Jalen Lundy, who's cooled off since the beginning of the season, is going to come back and have a really good game tonight. And they're going to need him to. Because uh, San Diego State right now, I think they're not a bubble team, um, but they're a team that could miss an NCAA tournament if they you know, can't string together multiple wins in a row. 4 o'clock, ESPN2. Florida at Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Not probably going to be a tournament team. They got to turn their season around quick. But Florida got a huge win against Kentucky, I believe, on Wednesday. Um, Will Clayton had seven threes. Florida trending towards an NCAA tournament here. They're one of the most underrated teams in the country here. Look, they play Kentucky tough at home, barely lost. Then they go beat them on the road um, earlier this week. Now they got a road game at AM. If they can win this game 2 0 week, they set themselves up perfectly to be an NCAA tournament team, and they'll get my eyes in the rankings. I think they're going to get some votes. This Florida team is very, very good. Um, they have great guards. They're led by their guards, which um, – I love a team in college basketball, especially in March, a team led by guards there um, that can control the pace of a game. Uh, but a and of course, have Wade Taylor. They're going to have other people needing to step up because Wade Taylor's been carrying them this season. Um, I like Florida, though, to get this done on the road. They did it once this week. I think they can do it twice. It's going to be a tough game. Not going to be easy. But um, I think the Gators can do it. I think the Gators can really do it. Let's start with one of our main event games. We have... Houston, the number four team in the country, the number two team in number three team in my rankings, going at Kansas in a huge game here. Um, the Jayhawks. I eighth in the country in the poll. They're eighth in my poll. A big game here for Kansas. Um, at home. It's a pick 'em according to the bets. I believe Kim Palm has it. Houston minus four. Um, look, Houston's the computer darling. They're number one in the net. They're number one in Kempom. The predictives love Houston, but it's Kansas at home. Um, it's Bill Self at home. This team really doesn't lose games at home, and they've proven that this year. Oh, my gosh. My nose is, like, so itchy. One sec. All right. We're back. Kansas at home, Bill Self, they don't lose these games, man. And and I believe Kelvin McCullough is going to be active for this game. Houston, man, though, they've been on a tear recently, especially on the defensive end. Um, they really just wear you down. Um, they're super physical, uh, and they're not afraid to commit fouls and play hard defense, and that's what they've been relying on um, this season. Look, they average, I don't know what they're, they're averaging less points in uh, Kansas, but they give up about 50-something points a game here. Um, Kansas is really a five-man roster. Um and they're going to have to need other people to step up in this game. Look, you cannot win a game with just five players against Houston who's going to wear you down. Um, and Jamal Shedd's been the star. Um, LJ Carr is the leading scorer, but, but Jamal Shedd's the star. You saw him have, what, 27 points earlier this week against Texas on Monday. Now they're coming off some rest, and they're going on the road. It's a huge game. Houston at Kansas. We don't. This is the first time they've been playing in the Big 12 environment. Um Man, I think Houston's the better team. I really do. But it's hard to bet against Kansas at home, especially a team led by Bill Self. So I'm going to take Kansas to win this game. Um, But, man, I don't feel confident in it. But, look, Hunter Dickinson, I think, is going to give a lot of problems to Jawan Roberts there. Kevin McCullough's been an amazing um play he's improved a lot from last year and um i think he's going to get to the line which he does really well um but look jamal shed versus dewan harris is a huge point guard matchup uh, this is such a good game this is a really really just high level college basketball game and it's the appetizer uh the real start of the great um saturday night that we have four o'clock espn expect a nice game. I don't think it's going to be super high scoring. I think this game could be decided in the 60s with Houston's defense here. And I think it's going to be close coming down the stretch. But I think Kansas, they, they have a knack for pulling off these close games at home. So I think the Jayhawks get it done. Um, But I don't feel confident in it. I, I just, the home court advantage, Houston going on the road. Look, Houston has one of the longest win streaks in the country now. And in the Big 12, that's hard to do. Um, but Kansas, you know, they, they've been up and down this year. They're still 17-4. I still think Kansas is a really good team. So give me the Jayhawks to get it done. Um, but it's it's going to be close. It's really, It really will be a close game there. And it's going to be a fun one. Um, 
man, there's just some really, really good games today. A nice little Pac-12 showdown at 5 o'clock, Colorado at Utah. Um, both these teams are going to be – I don't know if they're either of these are going to be – I think Colorado's better. Um, Utah's struggled as recent. Utah was looking like a tournament team, then they've really gone off the deep end a little bit. Maybe they this could be the game where they get back right. Um, it could be a bubble fair, uh, showdown. A bubble show down here, Maryland at Michigan State. Maryland's been playing some better basketball. Jameer Young's one of the best guards in the country. Left off that um, Magic, whatever, Magic Johnson or whatever the point guard list is. Um, I thought he should have been on it. Uh, Tyson Walker, another great point guard. These two teams are going to be going out here. Michigan State minus six. Could be much here. Michigan State, both these teams need wins. Uh, they're, they're both 13 and eight. Uh, of course, Michigan State had a huge preseason expectations and uh, didn't completely uh, live up, haven't lived up to them at all. And Maryland was supposed to, was a fringe ranked team. Um, I think both these teams can be NCAA tournament teams, um, but one of them is going to have to take a tough loss here. Michigan State needs it at home. We got a really good one at six. Auburn's going to Ole Miss. Auburn does not have a quad one win. This is a quad one opportunity. This would be the first one of the year. Um, but their metrics love Auburn. Old Miss, on the other hand, better record. The metrics don't love Old Miss. Um, Chris Beard's done an amazing job. I have Old Miss ranked 23 in the country, and while Auburn's 16th, um, Old Miss is plus three and a half at home, and that's a lot. Auburn with if Auburn loses this game, I've become really skeptical of a team that can't win big games. Old Miss, on the other hand, they've have they have some good wins here. Um, and they've really came out of nowhere this year. Not a team that was supposed to be good at all. Chris Beard's done an amazing job over there. Um, they've brought in guys like Alan Flanagan, a guy going against his former team here. Can he have a big night here? Um, Auburn's going to rely on John A. Broom, um, and he's they're going to need him to have a big game. But Ole Miss is, is deep with a lot of good players here. Brakefield's a good player. They just have a lot of good guys over there. Um, and this is going to be a game where if Ole Miss wins, they're proven to be a legit team that can tend the big – um, in the SEC, I think the lose this game is going to have a lot of questions surrounding them. If Auburn loses, it's can they win big games? They have no quad ones. And if Ole Miss lo loses, is are the metrics right? Or is this just an, a fringe NCAA tournament team? I would be more worried if if I would be more worried though if Auburn actually loses this game on the road here. If Ole Miss loses, it, you know, it just proves to me that Auburn's a good team, and I think Ole Miss is still I mean, one of these teams gets blown out, obviously. But I'm not too concerned if Ole Miss if they lose this game. I still think they're a good team. Um, the best mid major showdown of the week is Drake at Indiana State. Uh, we got a battle of. The two best teams in the MVC. These two could these two could be tournament teams here. We saw the MVC get multi bid league with Loyola and Drake a couple years ago. Can they do it now with Drake and Indiana State? Indiana State's the better team, uh, but Drake did beat him the first time at home. This is the return game at Indiana State. I think Indiana State should get the job done. Um, they're nineteen and three this year. Drake's eighteen and four. These are two really good mid majors. Um, and turn have this one on the second screen. Watch this one at six. At clock on ESPN two, it's a great game, a great showdown between two of the best in the MV two the two best in the MVC and the two best mid majors, probably two of the best mid majors in the country. Um, Princeton's coming off another loss; they faded. I think they've lost two in a row, but they're going playing back to back games. This one's at Brown, should be a win, but Yale got a huge win last night. Yale's the team is the team to be in the Ivy. I don't know. There's three good teams in the Ivy. I still think Princeton's one of them, Yale, and then Cornell. Those are the three teams that are actually good in the Ivy. The Ivy's an interesting league. That conference tournament's going to be really good. The main event of the night, the day, whatever you want to call it, is one where in here we call it the rivalry. Um, people call that Michigan, Ohio State. Over here in North Carolina, we call it Duke, Carolina. It's it's truly the game of the day. It delivers every time. Campuses that are eight, nine miles apart from each other, these schools hate each other. It's Duke and Carolina. Blue Bloods going at it twice a year. And this one's in the Dean Dome. We have two different environments from these schools. Cameron's such a small, inclusive stadium with so much rich history. The Dean Dome's a huge one where the Carolina fans bring it night in and night out wearing that light blue. 
What's the big, better shade of blue? We'll find out tonight in part one of the number seven ranked Duke Blue Devils travel on the road against the number three Carolina, North Carolina Tar Heels. Both these teams have lost to Georgia Tech this year. I have North Carolina ranked fourth in the country. I have Duke ranked fifth in the country. It's a showdown of we've been waiting for. We last couple of years we've had one of the teams be really good and one of the teams be you know pretty good. Um, we saw this these teams come down in the Final Four two years ago, which was amazing. Um, and these are two very even squads in my opinion. Um. Kyle Flipkowski, R.J. Davis, the two stars of this team. R.J. Davis is looking like a first-team All-American. He's been playing out of his mind recently. Um, and Flip's going to have to match up with Armando Baycott. Baycott's going to have the size. Baycott's been amazing in UNC Duke games in his career, and that's why he's became an, uh, become a UNC legend because he's delivered uh, big time in games. I think this game's going to be controlled by the veteran guards. Jeremy Roach and RJ Davis are both going to have to play their best basketball here because the rest of these teams are not used to this rivalry. Um, Harrison Ingram, a guy who has shown to be really good, is going against a guy like Mark Mitchell, who's improved so much from last year. Is he a shooter? No, but they are very similar type of players. Um, they're both going to be really hard defenders, and they're going to both rebound the ball. Jeremy McCain, Cormac Ryan, two guys that can – um, shoot the ball, and Jeremy kane has been so good this year shooting that ball, um, really efficient. And then the young point guard, Elliot Cadeau, is going to have to maintain his composure here. We saw him against Georgia Tech get really flustered, foul out, not be his best self. He's going to have to be more composed here. And Tyrese Proctor, wow. Tyrese Proctor is going to have to be the guy who's going to step up, and maybe he can be the X factor in this game. He's been playing amazing basketball of recent. Um, coming back from injury, he took him some time. I think he's back to being fully healthy, and he's taken a lot more shots. He's been a lot more aggressive. He's been one of the best players on this team. I think he's going to have to step up in a huge way here, and can other guys you know, fill in and make small plays. I think that's what always is the best about the Duke-Carolina rivalry is you have some unexpected player come up and start becoming a legend. Um, and I expect another classic in this rivalry. I expect another Austin Rivers game winner moment or a Caleb Love shot in the Final Four moment. Um, this rivalry is the best in sports. They meet again as top 10 foes here. Um, Carolina, Duke, it's going to be amazing. I know some friends going to the game. It's I, I've never been to one. I mean, the only chance of going to ones really is in, in, is in the Dean Dome. Um, it's practically impossible to go at Cameron. Um Game days there this morning that's starting soon, so I want to watch that. Man, this is just going to be an amazing game. I'm so excited for it. I love this game, um, especially living in North Carolina. You feel the local rivalry. Uh, these schools just don't like each other, man. It's going to be a good one. Give me Carolina at home to win. I'm going Carolina at home to win. That's my prediction. Um, I, and when it goes, if it, when it goes to Durham, I expect Duke to win. Um, but we'll see where those teams are at at the regular season finale. But right now, that's going to be a very good game. Another good ACC matchup is Syracuse at Wake. I think Wake minus 8.5 might be much there. Syracuse did lose earlier this week. Both these teams, I'm not sure if it will be NCAA tournament teams. But an interesting game there. Um, another really good game-ranked matchup, Iowa State at Baylor at 8 on ESPN2. Um, the Cyclones, man, trending amazingly right in the in the right direction. I got them 10th in the nation here, um, but they have to go on the road against a struggling Baylor team. I got Baylor ranked 22nd. Baylor loses this game. You'll be out of my rankings. Jacoby Walters struggled of recent. He's going to have to step up and play a big ball this one. I would say it's a team that does it by committee. Taman Lipsy's been the star guy, but Gilbert's a very good player as well. Um, a team that's, again, kind of led by their guards, Um. So and Baylor's a team that's always led by the guards. That's what Scott Drew likes. Um, I like Baylor get it done at home. Look, I think Iowa State keeps this super close. And I honestly, I might change my opinion. I think Iowa State's a better team. I really do. But the home court advantage, Baylor needs a win. They've struggled a recent. So give me the, give me the, fuck it, give me the Cyclones get it done on the road here. Um, I have some weird feeling about the Cyclones getting it done on the road, though, but not too confident, not too confident in that. 
Mississippi State's at Alabama on SEC Network here. Tolu Smith, the guy for Mississippi State, Alabama had a nice come from behind win this week. I believe it was against Vanderbilt. Um, I got Alabama 19th in the nation here. Uh, let's see if they can continue the win and prove that the metrics are right yet, yet about Alabama and they've caught back up and they became an, a really, really good team. Um, the next amazing game is Tennessee at Purdue. Or, do you know? Why did I just say Purdue? Like, I'm actually retarded. Tennessee at Kentucky. Um, These teams are a little different. Look how much Kentucky averages, 88 points per game. He's been this, they've been an, an offensive team that is not a great defensive team in Kentucky struggle. We saw them lose that game at Florida without DJ Wagner, without Justin Edwards. Um, and we'll see if they're going to be back to this game. Two starters. And if they're not, I think, Tennessee's going to win this game. It says it's a pick em. Um, I'm sure can, uh, Tennessee's favored in, like, the metrics. We got a star matchup between Dalton Connect and Antonio Reeves. I mean, Connect's been on a different level. He's averaging damn near 30 in SEC play. Um, coming off a huge game and a loss. Both these teams coming off a loss. Tennessee took a loss to South Carolina at home. Kentucky took a home loss to Florida. Um, but Connect's been the guy. Um, they're low reliant on on Connect. Look, they have two players in double digits, and Connect averages twenty. The next is eleven, while Kentucky has five players in double digits. Um, so it's two different styles of teams. Um, it's gonna be a good matchup. I got Kentucky dropped a little bit. I think I got them like eighteenth. Yeah, I got Kentucky eighteenth. I got Tennessee at seven. And oh, I forgot to drop Wisconsin. So that actually is going to change because Wisconsin lost. I haven't changed Wisconsin after that loss in Nebraska. So I will do that. I will do that. I forgot to do that. So Tennessee will actually probably move up a little bit. They will. Um, so will Kansas. Kansas will probably move up too because I got to drop Wisconsin just a little bit after that loss in Nebraska. Um, I think this is a really this is a really good matchup here. The best. Uh, maybe I don't know if they're the best two in the SEC, but they are. Two of the most exciting teams to watch. Kentucky's always fun to watch because they're so explosive offensively, which can lead to them having a really, really high scoring games and fun games to watch. Tennessee, I love watching Dalton connect. He's really good. Kentucky needs a win at home, man. Um, but one of these teams is gonna go in a little losing skin, which is okay. They both are 15-5. Tennessee's been amazing since their little struggles at the beginning of the year. Man, Tennessee's got a good road win already this year against Wisconsin. They can get the job done at Kentucky. It just validates that this team's really, really good. But I just don't see Tennessee win this game on the road. I think Kentucky is due for a win, is due for a good game. Reed Shepard's going to step up. if they can. I'm assuming DJ Wagner just know it's playing. If not, I think Tennessee wins. This is just a very, very good game between two well-coached teams. Um. While Tennessee's more experienced than Kentucky, Kentucky does have experience on their roster, and and I think it's going to be a very very good game. That's um, it's not going to be it's not going to be a blowout. I believe it's going to be close. I think Tennessee definitely has a chance of pulling the upset off. Not the upset, but getting a road win, um, which is not easy to do in college basketball. And then the night game, St. Mary's at Gonzaga. It's not as high. It's not as profile of a matchup as it usually is um, with none of these teams being ranked, but St. Mary's undefeated in the WCC. Um, the WCC might be a one big league. It depends. St. Mary's got off to such a bad start to start the year. Gonzaga really doesn't have a win over a tournament team. This is a chance for them to get one um, in a huge game. I think Gonzaga is going to win at home. I think they're playing better. Antoine Watson has been amazing for Gonzaga, but St. Mary's is, Played amazing since WCC um, game plays uh, or games have started the right uh, their conference season. Um, I think St. Mary's is the better team, but at Gonzaga in the kennel, not an easy place to go in and win. So I I'll take Gonzaga to win at home. Wouldn't be too surprised though if uh, St. Mary's gets the win and they prove they're the best team in the WCC. The last amazing game of the weekend is a Sunday game at one o'clock on CBS. Some could say a top 10 matchup. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to share my screen, but I'm going to go adjust my top 25. All right, we're back. I adjust my top 25. I dropped Wisconsin now the 10th in the country. Um, and I added Nebraska into my other considerations. Um, because, look, Wisconsin lost the game to Nebraska. A.J. Storr has been amazing, man, the transfer from St. John's. But it wasn't enough. They had a 15-point lead at half. They blew the lead. 
Um, and now you got they're them going. They're getting a home game against Purdue. Look, here's the thing. I you know I you know I don't like Purdue. You know I don't like Purdue. Um, was this game on Wednesday, the the Northwestern game? It might have been. Um, I don't know if t- was it was Purdue's game on Wednesday. Have I not talked about this game? Because it was absolutely ridiculous. Chris Collins getting ejected. Okay, it was. It was a Wednesday game. I don't even have to look. I remember it was Wednesday now. Uh, Purdue won a game against Northwestern. Um, they shot 30-something more free throws than them. Chris Collins get ejected. Um, rightfully so. He was pissed off. There was some missed calls there. And look, some of them were valid. They were found Zach Eady line. Zach Eady struggled from the line. But you 30 more fouls than another team is just, it's, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts. And I have to say that I don't like Purdue. I'm so I know I'm 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 I don't care I can be biased. I don't like Purdue. They're annoying to me. I don't like Zach Eady. He's the best player in college basketball. I'll accept him. He's a really good player. Um, I just don't like Purdue. Okay. Um, you can come at me all you want. I just don't like them. Wisconsin is not the better team though in this case. I think I think Purdue will get the win on the road here. Um, it's just hard to I. I think Wisconsin does have some size. They can Stephen Crowd, Tyler Wall. They can match up with Edie um, as best as they can. But man, I think Purdue's just proven to be a really good team, and I hate it. I hate it. If I want Wisconsin to win this game, I'll be rooting for Wisconsin to win this game. AJ Storch, one of the most underrated players in the country, he's been amazing for Wisconsin. Um, but this is a huge matchup here, another top ten matchup. Um, if Wisconsin wins, that'd be really nice. And Purdue hasn't played great basketball at home. They've they've won some really close games of recent. Um, and I think Purdue is a, is a vulnerable team. If um, you can, you know, stop ED, you got to stay out of foul trouble. Um, but Brayden Smith has stepped up and been really, really good this year. Lance Jones is a great transfer they've brought in. And anyway, I think Wisconsin is, is experienced enough to handle Purdue, and I think they'll keep it close. But it's hard to bet against Zach ED and Purdue. I think Purdue gets the win on the road here. Um, I'm not trying to jinx them. I honestly think they'll win that game. Um, but that's a very good one. Providence is at Villanova on Sunday. Could be interesting. Um, both of those teams need wins. Villanova's been. It's so disappointing to see how bad Villanova's been. Um, four game losing streak right now for the Nova and Kyle Neptune. Keep your eye out for uh for some rumors over there. And then the last good game on Sunday, Nebraska coming off that win against Illinois. CJ Wiltshire, the big game off the bench. Uh, Mask, I think, had a very good game for Nebraska. Is going at Illinois. Uh, Nebraska wins this game. You'll be ranked. You will. Uh, that'll be a two and zero week against Wisconsin and Illinois. But Nebraska hasn't won a road game in the Big Twelve all year, and that's why I'm not a big believer in Nebraska. They're a home team. They're a home warrior. Um, Illinois. Terrence Chan's come back playing better basketball. Marcus Domask has been amazing these last couple of weeks. I like Illinois to get the job done in that one. <sighs> that's a weekend preview. That's a weekend preview for you, man. Is there any day to watch college basketball? It's today. So go from four to about 10. Just watch college basketball. Have fun. Maybe do it with friends, do it with family. Um, if not, even do it by yourself. It's okay. As long as you're watching college basketball, I'll be here with you. I'll be back someday. I don't know what day. Probably Monday. Probably Monday. Unless something crazy happens today, um, I'll be back on Monday to recap it all. Man, I'm excited. Peace.